Dear listeners, tonight I beckon you to step into a realm of dreams, where forgotten goddesses watch over ancient villages, and the whispers of the sea tell tales of devotion and sacrifice. Relax, close your eyes, and let the story whisk you away to the mystical shores of Atlantis, where the waves carry secrets of courage, faith, and the enduring bond between the divine and the mortal. Prepare to be enchanted as we journey together through a world of wonder, timeless legends, and the miraculous return of Lysandra, the brave priestess who saved her people from an impending doom. The Curse of the Forgotten Goddess of Atlantis Uncover the Legend of Atlantis In a picturesque fishing village nestled along the rugged coastline of Atlantis, the air was filled with the salty tang of the sea and the melodic cries of gulls. This village, small and unassuming, was a world apart from the bustling grandeur of the Atlantean capital. Its inhabitants led simple lives, their days governed by the rhythm of the tides and the bounties of the ocean. Amidst this idyllic setting stood an ancient statue of a goddess weathered by time, but still exuding an air of quiet majesty. The villagers revered this statue with a devotion that had not waned through the centuries. The goddess, Unlike the prominent deities who were worshipped with lavish ceremonies at the royal court, had been forgotten by most of Atlantis. In the capital, the grand temples and shrines were dedicated to gods and goddesses who represented power, prosperity and knowledge. These deities received offerings of gold, precious stones, and the finest foods in elaborate rituals that showcase the wealth and sophistication of Atlantis. Priests and priestesses, adorned in resplendent robes, conducted these ceremonies with pomp and splendor, ensuring the favor of the gods for the mighty empire. In stark contrast, the goddess of the fishing village was a relic of a bygone era, her statue, carved from a single block of granite, stood at the edge of the village overlooking the turbulent sea. Time had softened the sharp lines of her features, but the essence of her serene and watchful gaze remained intact. Moss and seaweed clung to the base of the statue, and the occasional seabird perched on her outstretched arm. The villagers undeterred by the passage of time, continued to honour her with simple offerings of fish, shells and wild flowers gathered from the nearby cliffs. The villagers believed with unwavering faith that the goddess watched over them, her unseen hand guiding the fishermen back to shore and ensuring the fertility of their fields. Tales of her benevolence were passed down through generations, woven into the fabric of the village's collective memory. Elders spoke of times when the sea was especially generous, attributing the bountiful catches to the goddess's favor. Children grew up hearing bedtime stories of the goddess's protection, feeling a sense of comfort in her unseen presence. Yet the rest of Atlantis had long since turned its back on this ancient deity. As the empire expanded and grew in wealth and power, the simpler older beliefs were cast aside, in favor of the more sophisticated and politically advantageous worship of the major gods. The royal court and the elite of Atlantis considered the worship of the forgotten goddess to be quaint at best, 
and backward at worst. This neglect did not go unnoticed by the goddess herself, and her wrath began to manifest in subtle but increasingly alarming ways. At first, the signs were easily dismissed as natural occurrences. Cracks began to appear in the ground, snaking their way through the cobbled streets of the village and the foundations of their homes. The villagers, though concerned, attributed these fissures to the restless nature of the earth. However, the cracks grew wider and more ominous, and whispers of unease spread through the village. The elders, with their deep-rooted belief in the goddess, interpreted these signs as a manifestation of her displeasure. They urged the villagers to redouble their efforts in their devotions, hoping to appease the goddess and restore her favor. The sea, too, became a source of dread. Waves that once lapped gently at the shore now surged with a menacing force. Unusual swells and currents began to threaten the safety of the fishermen, their boats often tossed about by sudden, inexplicable turbulence. More than once, the villagers had to scramble to higher ground as the ocean seemed to reach out with hungry fingers, threatening to engulf their homes and livelihoods. These events were far beyond the ordinary ebb and flow of the tides, and they fueled the villagers' growing anxiety. Despite these ominous signs, the villagers' faith in the goddess did not waver, they gathered at her statue more frequently, their prayers growing more fervent and their offerings more abundant. They cleaned the statue with reverent care, removing the encroaching moss and seaweed, and adorned her with garlands of fresh flowers. The village women wove intricate patterns of shells and sea-glass into necklaces, which they draped around the statue's neck, hoping to catch her eye and soften her heart. The sense of community in the village was strengthened by this shared devotion. Every sunrise and sunset, the villagers would gather together to chant ancient hymns, their voices rising in harmony with the crashing waves. The children were taught these songs from an early age, their innocent voices adding a poignant note to the melodies. The elders recounted the old stories with renewed vigor, instilling in the younger generation the importance of their heritage and the power of their faith. As the villagers continued their devotions, they could not ignore the growing urgency of their situation. The cracks in the earth and the turbulent sea were clear indicators that something was amiss, and the future of their village hung in the balance. They clung to the hope that their faith and dedication would be enough to appease the goddess and avert disaster, unaware that the fate of not just their village but all of Atlantis was intricately tied to the wrath of the forgotten goddess. Among the villagers, there was a young and devoted priestess named Lysandra, who served diligently at the goddess's altar. With a deep sense of duty and unwavering faith, Lysandra had grown up hearing the tales of the forgotten goddess and the mysterious signs that hinted at her lingering presence. Her curiosity about these strange signs and the true power of the goddess had only intensified over the years. Unlike her fellow villagers, who accepted the signs with a mixture of reverence and fear, Lysandra was driven by a desire to understand the deeper meanings behind them. Lysandra spent countless hours at the altar, 
which was nestled in a secluded grove near the edge of the village. The altar, a simple yet sacred space, was adorned with offerings of fresh flowers, seashells, and tokens of gratitude from the villagers. The statue of the goddess, though weathered by time, stood majestically at the center of the altar, its eyes seemingly watching over the faithful who came to pay their respects. One day, as Lysandra was meticulously tending to the altar, she noticed something unusual. A faint glimmer of light seemed to emanate from the base of the statue, a sight she had never seen before. Driven by curiosity, she carefully examined the pedestal, her fingers tracing the ancient carvings that adorned its surface. To her astonishment, she discovered a small concealed compartment hidden within the pedestal. With a mixture of excitement and trepidation, she gently pried it open. Inside the compartment lay an ancient scroll, its edges frayed and its surface covered in dust. Lysandra's heart raced as she carefully unrolled the fragile parchment. The scroll was inscribed with intricate symbols and writings in a language long forgotten by most. However, Lysandra, having dedicated herself to the study of the old texts and rituals, could decipher its meaning. As she read the scroll, her eyes widened in shock and realization. The scroll detailed a curse placed by the forgotten goddess, a curse that threatened not only her village, but the entire island of Atlantis. It revealed that the goddess's wrath had been kindled by the neglect and disrespect shown by the people of Atlantis. The curse was not just a random manifestation of her anger. It was a deliberate act of retribution that would culminate in the total submersion of Atlantis beneath the ocean waves if the goddess was not appeased. According to the scroll, the only way to lift the curse was through a ritual that had to be performed at the peak of a storm. This ritual could only be undertaken by a devotee with a pure heart, someone whose faith and dedication were beyond reproach. Lysandra realized the enormity of the task before her. The ritual was fraught with danger, requiring her to confront the fury of the elements and the goddess's wrath head on. Despite the peril, Lysandra felt a deep sense of responsibility. She knew that she was the one chosen by fate to undertake this mission. Her unwavering devotion to the goddess and her desire to protect her village and the entire island gave her the courage to face the daunting challenge. Determined to save not just her village, but all of Atlantis, Lysandra began her preparations for the perilous task ahead. She spent days in deep contemplation and prayer, seeking guidance and strength from the goddess. She meticulously studied the instructions detailed in the scroll, committing every word to memory. The ritual required specific incantations and offerings, and it had to be performed with absolute precision to succeed. Lysandra gathered the necessary items, including rare herbs, sacred oils, and symbolic tokens, each with a significance explained in the scroll. As the day of the storm approached, Lysandra shared her discovery with the village elders. They were initially skeptical, but were eventually convinced by the ancient writings and Lysandra's unwavering conviction. The entire village came together in support of her mission, offering their prayers and assistance in gathering the materials needed for the ritual. 
The weight of their hopes and fears rested heavily on Lysandra's shoulders, but she remained resolute. On the night of the storm, Lysandra stood at the edge of the village, gazing out at the turbulent sea. The sky was a churning mass of dark clouds, and the wind howled with a ferocity that sent shivers down her spine. With a determined heart, Lysandra headed to the shore where the altar to the forgotten goddess was located. She continued walking despite the wind pulling at her robes and whipping through her hair. The ancient words on the precious scroll she held contained the directions for the ceremony that was supposed to lift the curse that threatened to destroy Atlantis as a whole. The altar, a solitary sentinel on the rocky coastline, seemed to loom larger in the encroaching darkness. Waves crashed violently against the rocks, sending plumes of salty spray into the air. Lysandra took a deep breath, her eyes scanning the horizon where the storm clouds gathered like an advancing army. She knew this was the moment of truth. As she reached the altar, Lysandra arranged the sacred items she had brought, rare herbs, symbolic tokens, and offerings to the goddess. The winds howled around her, carrying the scent of the ocean and the promise of the storm's fury. Lysandra began the ritual, her voice rising in ancient incantations that had been passed down through generations. Each word she spoke was imbued with centuries of faith and devotion. The storm grew fiercer, the sky now a tumultuous swirl of black and grey. Lightning flashed, illuminating the scene in stark momentary brilliance. The waves surged higher, crashing against the rocks with a force that sent tremors through the ground beneath Lysandra's feet. Despite the cacophony of the storm, she continued to chant, her voice a steady beacon amidst the chaos. As Lysandra's voice grew louder, the winds seemed to fight back with even greater ferocity, almost as if they sought to silence her. But she would not be deterred. She poured all her faith and strength into the ritual, calling upon the goddess with every ounce of her being. She could feel the weight of Atlantis's fate pressing upon her shoulders, yet she stood firm a solitary figure of defiance and hope. Just as the ritual neared completion, the storm reached its zenith. The sky was a maelstrom of flashing lightning and booming thunder. Lysandra's voice, though strong, was almost drowned out by the howling wind and the roar of the ocean. She could feel the energy building a palpable force that thrummed through the air and resonated within her very soul. Then, in a blinding flash of lightning, a bolt struck the altar. The world seemed to explode in a burst of white light and deafening sound. Lysandra felt herself being engulfed by an overwhelming surge of energy. For a brief, terrifying moment, she was suspended in a void surrounded by the furious elements of the storm. The force of the lightning bolt seemed to pierce through her, filling her with a sensation both excruciating and exhilarating. And then, just as suddenly as it had come, the light faded, and Lysandra vanished into the tempest. The storm raged on for what seemed like an eternity, its fury unabated. The villagers, huddled together in their homes, prayed for Lysandra's safety, their hearts heavy with fear and hope. They had witnessed the lightning strike, and they knew that something extraordinary had occurred. 
When the storm finally began to subside, the first light of dawn broke through the clouds, casting a pale ethereal glow over the shore. The villagers, cautiously emerging from their shelters, made their way to the altar. The air was still heavy with the aftermath of the storm, the ground slick with rain and sea spray. They found no trace of Lysandra. The altar stood as it had before, though now it bore the scorch marks of the lightning strike. The villagers searched the area desperately, their calls for Lysandra swallowed by the soft murmur of the retreating waves. Their hearts sank as they realized she was gone. But then one of the villagers spotted something glimmering in the dawn's light, partially buried in the sand near the altar. It was a solitary amulet, delicate and beautiful, unlike any they had seen before. Its surface shimmered with another worldly light, a soft glow that seemed to pulse gently with its own inner life. The villagers gathered around it, their faces filled with awe and sorrow. The amulet was recognized as the one Lysandra had always worn, a symbol of her devotion to the goddess. Its presence was a poignant reminder of her sacrifice. The villagers, though grief-stricken, took the amulet as a sign that Lysandra's efforts had not been in vain. They believed that the goddess had accepted her offering, and that Lysandra had been taken to a place beyond their reach, a place where she would continue to serve and protect them in spirit. With heavy hearts the villagers returned to their homes, carrying the amulet with them. They placed it at the altar, a symbol of Lysandra's courage and the enduring faith of their community. The dawn's light grew stronger, bathing the village in a gentle warmth that felt almost like a blessing. Lysandra's disappearance had cast a pall of sorrow over the village. The once lively community was now subdued, with a tangible sense of loss hanging in the air. The villagers mourned the absence of their beloved priestess, yet within their grief flickered a small but resilient flame of hope. The amulet Lysandra had left behind was seen as a sign from the goddess, a symbol that her sacrifice had been acknowledged and perhaps even accepted. This token of faith gave the villagers the strength to continue their devotions with renewed fervor. Day after day the villagers gathered at the altar, offering prayers and gifts to the forgotten goddess. Their collective faith and determination began to bear fruit as the ominous signs of disaster gradually receded. The cracks in the earth healed, and the turbulent seas calmed, giving the village a reprieve from the constant threat of destruction. These changes bolstered their belief that Lysandra's actions had indeed appeased the goddess and averted the catastrophic fate that loomed over Atlantis. Months passed, and the village settled into a new rhythm. The memory of Lysandra's brave act and the miraculous amulet she left behind became a central part of their daily lives. Stories of her courage were told and retold, ensuring that even the youngest children knew of her sacrifice. The amulet, now enshrined at the altar, served as a tangible link to their absent priestess and a reminder of the power of faith and devotion. One peaceful evening, the people witnessed a breathtaking sight. The sky turned pink and orange as the sun descended below the horizon. 
a woman who exuded beauty and ethereality, emerged from the gentle waves of the lake, bathed in an otherworldly glow. It was Lysandra, alert and bright with a heavenly aura. After a period of stunned silence, the peasants suddenly started shouting in joy. They ran to welcome her, their faces lighting up with relief and happiness. Lysandra's return was nothing short of miraculous. She recounted her incredible journey to the eager crowd, describing how upon completing the ritual she had been transported to a mystical realm where the goddess herself resided. In this sacred place, Lysandra had stood before the goddess, her heart laid bare in all its purity and devotion. The goddess, moved by Lysandra's unwavering faith and selfless sacrifice, had lifted the curse that threatened Atlantis. She granted Lysandra the knowledge and wisdom needed to return to the mortal world, along with important lessons about balance, respect, and the interconnectedness of all beings. The villagers listened in awe as Lysandra spoke of the divine teachings she had received. The goddess emphasized that true power lay not in dominion or conquest, but in unity and mutual respect. The goddess imparted that all life was interconnected, and the fate of one was intrinsically tied to the fate of all. This profound lesson resonated deeply with the villagers, reaffirming their commitment to honor the goddess and live in harmony with each other and their environment. With Lysandra's return, the village began to thrive like never before. The signs of impending disaster had vanished completely, replaced by an era of unprecedented peace and prosperity. The once turbulent seas now provided bountiful catches, and the fields yielded plentiful harvests. The villagers, inspired by Lysandra's divine encounter, worked together with renewed purpose, their efforts guided by the principles of respect and unity. The news of Lysandra's miraculous return and the blessings of the goddess soon spread beyond the village, reaching the far corners of Atlantis. The tale of her bravery and the divine favor she had secured captured the imagination of the entire nation, even reaching the royal court. The new ruler of Atlantis, moved by the events, decreed that the forgotten goddess be reinstated among the pantheon of deities worshipped throughout the land. Temples were constructed in her honor, and elaborate rituals were performed to appease her spirit and celebrate her benevolence. The amulet left by Lysandra, a symbol of her devotion and sacrifice, was enshrined in the main temple dedicated to the goddess. Pilgrims from all over Atlantis came to see the sacred artifact, offering their prayers and paying homage to both the goddess and the brave priestess who had saved them all. Elisandra, now revered not only in her village but throughout Atlantis, continued her service as a priestess, she used the divine gifts and wisdom bestowed upon her to heal and guide her people, ensuring that the lessons imparted by the goddess were woven into the fabric of their daily lives. Her teachings emphasized the importance of honoring the past, respecting the divine, and maintaining harmony with the natural world. The once-forgotten goddess was finally remembered and revered, her name spoken with respect and gratitude. The curse that had threatened Atlantis was lifted, 
and a new era of peace and prosperity dawned over the land. Lysandra's legacy lived on, a timeless reminder of the power of faith, devotion, and the enduring bond between the divine and the mortal. The story of Lysandra and the Forgotten Goddess became a cherished part of Atlantis's history, a lesson in love, sacrifice, and the importance of respecting both the past and the divine. Dear listeners, may your dreams be filled with the wonder of ancient legends and your heart with the courage of brave Lysandra. Good night, and may you sleep peacefully, embraced by the protection of the forgotten goddess. Until we meet again for another enchanting adventure, may the divine guide your path and inspire your soul.